Ooh. Hi, how are you all? It's been a while, but I'm back, and it's good to be back. Uh, this is again Annie's Way, and I'm Annie, of course. Uh, I promised when I first started my podcast that I would share uh, positive information, and I want to be positive with you. And the information I share with you, I consider that information to be information that have been have been proven beneficial to me. Mm-hmm. In other words, information that has helped me in the past. Things that I talk to you about are things that I have tried or have knowledge of, but I would not talk to you about something that I don't have some knowledge of or have had an experience with. Uh, and it came to mind while I was away that children deserve as much of, of our attention as we can give them. They deserve it. And uh, I know a lot of times people say, well, we were too young or she was young. Uh, I don't buy into that because one thing I feel like when we become mature enough to give birth, with that comes responsibilities. And of course, if we get involved and we start doing things that adults do or mature people do, then we have to think on a higher level. And sometimes as parents, we sell our children short. Uh, you'd be surprised how much your child might already know. Uh, I'll use myself as an ex- ex- experience. When I first uh, became pregnant, my mother just couldn't believe that I knew anything about pregnancy and having babies. And uh, I felt insulted by her and also uh, wanted to laugh at her. You know, how could you not know um, my maturity, but she meant well. I was brought up in a nice home, Christian family, and they were doing the best they could for me. Uh, but one thing I'd like to get away from, or I should hope that most mothers would get away from, get away from saying the child doesn't have a father. You know, he doesn't have a father in the home. Uh, well, you know, it takes two people mm-hmm. to get a child. You cannot have a child without the action of male and female. So uh, don't whine and cry. Once you, once you have accepted the responsibility of having that child, you owe it to the child to do the best you can for him or her. Now, what you can do, too, is you can be stronger or put up a stronger uh, front. Also, you have brothers, you have uncles, you have friends, and we must be willing to trade. There must be something that you can do as a, like a bartering system. Uh, Maybe your neighbor or your cousin or a relative might be willing to take on your boy for a camping trip or for a weekend or just to show him how to do things. I'm appalled at people who have teenage boys in the home and they'll go out and pay somebody to cut their yard. And then you hear them talk about how broke they are. Well, first of all, if you talk to the child, especially a young boy, uh, he, he should understand it costs to have people to come to take care of your yard. And when I say your yard, if you live in a home and your family is in that home, that's our home. And I'm speaking from experience. An eight year old can use a lawnmower. Now, I I don't know what your eight year old child can do, but mine did. And even if not eight, my goodness, by the time the child is 10 or, 10 or 11, he should be able to handle it. And you could be afraid, but as a mother, you should be able to use Rambo, and you should train him to use it in a safe manner. Or go to YouTube and watch YouTube with him and learn how to maintain a Rambo. But I, I just don't understand how parents, 
can have teenage boys in the house and spend a hundred and two hundred dollars a month having the yard done by somebody else. I just don't get it, you know. And what really gets me is that those same parents would not want to give his or her own child that money. Well, give the child a chance to earn it. Uh, it's better that your child earn that money and be able to spend it and then you pay it to somebody else and have your child wishing he had a tape recorder, wishing he had some socks, or wishing he had some designer tennis. Um, there is just so much out there that we're not doing to help ourselves. When it comes to our little girls, girls can start cooking things at a very early age. There's so many prepared meals where all you have to do is just put it in the microwave. Surely you can show your child how to use a microwave. <clears throat> but all these things help us to save money or free money up for better things. Uh, children hurt when they go to school and they see other children with things that they don't have. And they don't understand why they don't have it. But you should understand why they don't have it. Maybe they could have it if you teach the child how to do things around the house that cost you money. Uh, maybe if you teach your girls how to help you take care of the house, you'll have more time to spend with your girls. Uh, I've seen mothers say that, well, I have to go home and cook. Why? Why do you have to go home and cook when you have a teenage daughter in the house? You know, why can't that daughter learn how to cook and assist you? Why do you have to rush home to clean the house when you have several teenagers in the house? Uh, boys clean very well. Most boys I know very well are boys who can take care of a house. And that's another reason why a lot of boys or young men are not getting married because women look at themselves as caretakers or homemakers and they like to think that a man needs a woman to cook and clean. No, he does not. He needs a woman for a companion. He needs a woman that can love him. He can love her. They can take care of each other. But you're selling yourself cheap if you think that you're providing a man with somebody to take care of him. You know, or when I say take care of him, I mean like cooking and cleaning. We were not born to be servers. We were born to be lovers, caretakers, mothers, daughters. But we need to stop selling ourselves short. We need to start saying that I, I have a lot to offer. I can talk to my husband. He can talk to me about his job. And I can talk to him about him about my job and he might even help me find a solution for my problem and that that's the kind of thing that I would like to see us get more into uh, I remember uh, when my children were younger I had friends that would take them fishing or would show them how to do things how to fix things and and they got a big kick out of it I remember one time having a little problem with my two boys and I had a cousin come for a visit, and he noticed that they were being a little belligerent. So he took them home with him for a couple weeks. And when they came back, they had a new love for each other. The boys, they fought quite a bit, but after that, they learned to be friends to each other. And they, they learned that this is my brother, and I'm going to treat him with love and respect. I'm not going to hurt him because I don't want anybody else to hurt him. And that's what we should instill in our children, you know, a love and a protection of each other. Uh, I'm not going to talk any longer because I want to keep my podcast down. I should have been timing myself. I'm thinking that I'm going to try to keep them from 10 to 12 minutes. And that way, uh, you won't have to take too much time to uh, listen to me. And uh, you wouldn't feel like, well, I can't get into the podcast because Annie is going too long. So, again, I'd like to say, 
but I give our children more responsibility. Let's care and love ourselves enough to let them help us and let's be happy with each other. Let's do more with each other. And from now on, when I come on, I will be trying to time myself so that uh, I won't have to worry about going too much over time. And I think that way we would both be happier. Uh, I didn't get into, one point I meant to get into is that even though I had a husband, I had a husband that was away a lot. My husband was in the service, in the military, where he was absent a lot. His job required him to spend a year, two years away from home. We were separated many times for two years. And during those times, I was in the same boat that a lot of other parents are in. I had to fend for myself and my children. And so I had to be independent. And with me, I had to be independent away from home. I, I lived many times 1,500 miles from the nearest relative. But I managed, I made it, I did just fine. And uh, we have to remember too, we call ourselves Christians. And if we are Christians, know that we're blessed. You know, God will take care of you. He takes care of his own. So we have to keep that in mind. But I will be back again. I'll be trying to uh, have a podcast at least once a week. And I'll be looking forward to seeing you. And thank you for listening. Whoa.